I really don't think I'm sleeping, and I really don't think I'm dreaming. This can't be right, though. Hold on, maybe I am dreaming. Maybe it's time to wake up. Ooh. Oh, that didn't work. I've got to wake up, this can't be true. Oh. Yep, I'm definitely awake. This isn't a dream. I've got an RS Escort Cosworth. I can't tell you how excited I am to have this car here today. I've been trying to get this car for quite a few days now because I've just been desperate to drive it. I remember when this car came out early 90s and it was just the high performance hatch to have at the time and Unfortunately, at those days, in 1992, when this car was released on the market, I was just starting as a student, 18 years old, didn't have a penny to my name. There was no way I could afford this car, but I was obsessed with it. I've never driven this car before today. It's the first time I've ever driven this car. It is the old brother for the Focus RS. So before, this was the last Escort essentially, and then it was the Focus Mark I, then the Mark II, and obviously now the Mark III. This is the pre-Focus RS. Now I haven't actually bought this car, it actually belongs to uh, the guy who owns the Ford dealership here where I live, and he's very kindly lent it to me for the day. He uses this car every day. This is his daily driver, so it's not a perfect car. There's scratches on it, it's worn, it's dusty. It's a used Escort RS. And I know some purists out there will go, oh my God, you shouldn't use it. These cars need to be preserved. They're so rare. They're so hard to come by. Um, so he uses it all the time. So I've just nicked his, his transport for the day. He's actually borrowed my Focus RS for today um, in, in, as a swap. So, but I think I was more excited than him to borrow his car, which is now 21 years old. So I'm going to give you a bit of history about the Escort RS Cosworth. And at the same time, we'll have a look at some of the features of the car and then we'll take it on the road and see how it goes. For those of you who like a bit of history and like a bit of knowledge about cars, I, I'm sure most of you watching this may already know the history of this particular car. Um, but it was launched by Ford in 1992. I think it was in production for about four years. They made about seven and a half thousand cars. The distinguishing feature with this car is surely the enormous wing on the back. <laughs> it was actually known as the whale tail spoiler. That's what it was called for obvious reasons. But I, I mean, it's just marvelous, isn't it? It's enormous. I mean, the size of that wing, I don't think you'd get away with that on a modern car. <laughs> It would just be too outrageous. But back then, it was the, the wing. There was no other car that had a wing like this. And obviously I know the Sierra RS Cosworth had a similar wing on the back, but this one was higher. This was a higher wing. The Escort, the, the Sierra was about halfway up the, the rear window. This one was much higher up, right up here. And it just looked insane. So if you were some mental boy racer, this was the ultimate dream car with the ultimate dream wing. Now, when the car was originally launched, the first two and a half thousand odd cars were actually built to homologate it for uh, World Rally Championship. And so they all came with the wing because the wing was part of the actual uh, rally car. Later on, the uh, car changed slightly. So you could actually ask for it without the rear wing, but most people sensibly requested the wing to be fitted. So, and this is actually a later car. So this is actually a 95 model car. And there's also another difference between this and the original car that was the uh, FIA spec car is the fact that this one has a slightly smaller turbocharger. So it removes some of the lag that you got with the early cars. Um, they're both Garrett turbos, but the original one was a bigger turbo. This one's a slightly smaller turbo. So you get rid of some of that lag that you get with these old turbo engines. So remember, this is an, a 21 year old car. And I think what really gives that away is the size of the wheels, because the wheels are actually 16 inch. And if you think now the Focus is what, 
18 inch, no, actually the Focus is 19 inch. Those wheels do actually look sort of inadequate for the car. They just look so small. We're just used to such big wheels these days. And I think the size of the wheel definitely gives it away that this is an old car. Um, obviously this one being a sport model started growing some skirts and it's got a big splitter on the front there as you can see these uh, bonnet vents look great you don't really see those on many cars these days but those vents look absolutely fabulous the flared wheel arches i mean i think that's one of the things that's probably missing on the current focus rs um, i think that really sort of adds to the dynamic look of the car it's got the side skirts and then if we come around the back here the all-important badge that badge is a dream four by four i'm not sure if that's an original um badge actually i don't know why they would put four by four on it but um it was actually a four-wheel drive car there was a split between 33 to 66 front to rear um obviously no torque vectoring in those days it was just a normal four-wheel drive system but the, the really interesting thing with this car is that it's actually not an Escort. Um, it looks like an Escort, but it's not an Escort. It was actually built on the Ford Sierra platform, which is the car that came before it. And the thing is with the Sierra, Sierra had capability for four wheel drive, and it also was able to fit the engine that's in this car, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And so it's actually just a rebodied Sierra. It's not really, it's not really an Escort. This was the last four-wheel drive RS before the new Mark III Focus RS came out. Exhaust-wise, he's uh, the owner of this car has actually removed, um, I think, one of the silencers, so it's only got the back box, uh, so it should sound quite good when we get it on the road later. Couldn't find how to open the bonnet. Seems to just open. Right, what we have here is a two litre turbocharged four cylinder, importantly, Cosworth tuned engine. So here we've got the turbo and that's a Garrett T25 turbo. It's a slightly smaller one than the T3, I think that was used on the original car. This is a, a wastegate that uh, the owner has changed on the car so it hasn't got the original wastegate it's got its own new wastegate that apparently is not as abrupt as the original apart from that there's not a lot really to see in the engine bay this is a very sort of early 90s interior late 80s early 90s interior you know lots of hard plastic uh, the steering wheel doesn't actually adjust for reach, only for height. Sierra looking gear stick in those, from those days. Um, all of the RSs came with Recaro seats like these. It is a five seater, but, uh, and it's not too bad in terms of room in the back. We've got the white dials there, which were an RS signature color. And just like on the RSs before and after, there's always those three central dials. They're slightly different to what we've got in the Focus. This one's got the battery voltage um, instead of the uh, engine and the oil temperature. So we've got battery voltage, turbo, and the oil pressure. Always good to see a Cosworth badge inside the car to remind you that you are actually in a Cosworth tuned car in terms of driving position it's uh, apart from the fact that the steering wheel is slightly far away which i see it still is in the rs as well the focus rs but um it's actually not that bad it, it feels okay considering it's quite an old car the, the driving position is relatively comfortable um i thought it was going to be a bit compromised but so apart from the reach on the steering wheel it's not that bad what you do notice in here is that it feels quite small. It feels like you're in, you know, possibly like a Fiesta size, a modern Fiesta size. That's what it's like inside this car. We've got a very old <laughs> plastic clock here. Um, and these controls, they just, I mean, they, they feel and look incredibly dated. Um, the hi-fi here is not original, so that's been added in afterwards. This one's got a sunroof. I don't know whether they all came with a sunroof or whether it was an optional extra. In terms of these seats, 
Um, these Recaro seats, they're actually really comfy, as you would expect from a Recaro seat. So um, they really sort of hug you in, which is quite nice. So overall inside the car, it does feel really dated. I mean, it really does feel from a different era, um, but it's quite snug. It's actually relatively comfortable. Um, you can fit five people in, so not bad really for a 21 year old car. Right, I think that's enough talking about it. Let's take it for a ride. First thing that's quite noticeable when you st when you get in this car is that the steering is quite vague compared to a modern day car. Yeah, the steering is um, slightly woolly. I don't know whether it's because it's an old car and maybe the steering gear isn't as as tight as it was when it was new. Uh, but it definitely feels vague, and the steering feels quite slow. It just feels like slow steering, which is strange. You know, you would expect it to be quite sharp but it's not, it's not direct steering. Quite a lot of noise as well. There's obviously not a lot of soundproofing in here. I keep trying to go, I keep trying to put the car in sixth gear, but obviously there isn't one. I'm accidentally gonna put it in reverse if I carry on doing that. Um, feels like it needs another gear really, because it's quite noisy. And the gearbox, the gearbox is quite rubbery. I mean, it doesn't just slot into place like, you know, it does on a, a modern Focus. But wow, you really notice the difference in the engineering in 20, 30 years, you know, 25 years maybe. I've noticed ooh, the brakes are actually pretty good, better than I thought they were going to be. Um, I can't say they've got a huge amount of feel. Acceleration wise, well, I mean, it doesn't compare to a a modern hot hatch really I mean it's supposed to have 220 horsepower it doesn't feel it heel and towing is a bit of a challenge I can't do it in this car at all the pedal placement's slightly odd you do really notice the turbo in this car a couple of reasons one is the noise you can hear the turbo whine quite a bit you can definitely hear the wastegate and you do notice some lag at the bottom of the rev range you definitely notice some lag there it's not as pronounced as i thought it might be it's quite a short first gear it does shift but yeah not quite like a modern whole hatch just loads of noise <laughs> it's a really noisy car it's amazing it actually attracts quite a bit of attention Lots of people have been sort of slowing down to look at the car, been following it around. It's just because you never really see them on the road. They're just as rare as a normal Ford Focus RS at the moment. See, there's quite a long throw on that gearbox. Quite satisfying actually, in a way. It really sort of like, really working that gearbox. Careful you don't try and put it into six though. This is fabulous. I mean, you just never get a chance to drive a car like this. This is, you know, it's a rare opportunity to see, to compare, especially to compare how things have changed. You know, it's just, this was a different era. I think with these older cars, you really feel like you're really driving it. You know, I think modern cars are sometimes just too good. They're too quick, they're too refined. Well, this is not quick. Well, it is quick, but it's not refined. And, you know, it is a bit more of a challenge to get around the corners, trying not to trash his car, seeing as um, it's his daily driver. Yeah, I managed to do my, my heel and toe there. 
things have changed a lot. We went from this to the Mark I Focus to the Mark II Focus and now we're the Mark III Focus. That's a lot of steps in between this car and my current car. I am so chuffed that I've had the opportunity today of driving this car. And I know they always say like, don't drive your heroes because you're always gonna be disappointed. This is not like a modern car. This is an old car at the end of the day. But it's absolutely wonderful. And I'm so glad I've had this opportunity. It's a great car. It feels like you're really driving it. Feels like you're really having to drive it. I'm driving slowly, by the way, because I'm overtaking the police. Not that I was speeding at all, but it's a rather more sensible approach. Let's put this into gear here, right? So I'm in third gear, 40 kilometers an hour. I'm going to floor it, right? 2,000 revs, 3,000 revs, 4,000 revs. Now we go. It takes a bit of time for the turbo to spool up there. I could get used to this. I think I could just drive around all day now. I don't really want to give it back to him. Should have done a swap for the weekend. 1992, 18 years old. I was reading my auto car magazine. This was on the front cover. This was the car I desperately wanted. And I never got it. And I still haven't got it. But at least I've driven it. I just love this old school basic sort of car you know i don't think there's even traction control i'm not sure but i like the fact that you feel like you're actually working this car to get the most out of it and okay i'm not pushing it everywhere like a madman but you certainly get the feel of this car i think it is quite dominated by two things it's definitely dominated the experience is dominated by the wing, which you can see all the time in that rear view mirror and the engine. The engine and the noise, that's, that's the experience. That's the Escort RS Cosworth experience. And it's bloody good. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe. I'm scrounging some cars around that I'm interested in, hopefully you're interested in. Um, so this is just the beginning of hopefully a series of trying out different cars, reviewing them in a normal way um, and see what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, please like it, please subscribe and I'll see you very soon.